great. Um, I was lucky enough to do a session with um, the University of Surrey yesterday, and I know we've got some of the um, the people from that session logging in today as well. So welcome to you as well. Um, usual spiel at the start of these. Um, my name is Andy Hollington. I'm the CEO of the, the Square Meter Group, um, incorporating crowd safety training. Um, those of you who don't know us, we are a consultancy and training business, um, and we, we deliver crowd safety related training, as it says on the tin, um, all across the world. So we've done quite a lot of work across Australia, New Zealand, the Middle East, Europe, uh, and recently Asia as well. Um, so we, we try and do everything crowd safety related. Um, what we also like to do is give a, a few things back uh, for free. So we are running these free CPD webinars for everybody and utilising all our contacts to bring you some really good content. Hopefully it's really useful. Um, this session is sponsored as most of the ones moving forward will be sponsored by the Crowd Magazine. Uh, hopefully everyone's heard of the Crowd Magazine. If you haven't, you can just jump onto the website after this and, and register, that'd be great. You can also download the magazine from um, App Store and Google Play as well. Um, so the, the Crowd Magazine have paid for our webinar upgrade to, to 500 people. Some of these webinars are getting really, really popular. Okay, so as we um, move forward, just a little bit of housekeeping. Questions are really encouraged. We want you to get the most out of the session. If you could send me uh, questions using the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen, we've enabled all the functionality of Zoom. So at the bottom, there's a Q&A button. Some of you will be familiar with that. If you click on that, and that's where to send your questions. So if you've got a question for Josh or even one for me, I'll try and answer. Um, send it through the Q&A function. Now what you'd be able to do is if you really like someone's question, there's a, a little thumbs up underneath it. If you tick that, it will raise the question in order of priority. So that question will be boosted to the top. Okay, so please do that. The chat functionality is enabled as well. If you want to if you want to send a message to everyone, feel free. Uh, we encourage it to be really inclusive of this. We want everyone to get the most out of it. Um, if you want to send a message to me, feel free if you're having issues with anything, and I'll try my best to help you. Um, something that came up in one of our first webinars was that people wanted to share LinkedIn details. I would really encourage that. This is the whole part of any learning for us is that you get just as much out of the networking as you do the actual learning. So feel free to send your LinkedIn details in there, connect with everybody. That's what this industry is all about, is networking and, and who you know. So feel free to do that. So questions um, will be answered at the end. I will ask uh, Josh a few questions as we go along. Um, but the, the last part of the webinar is really reserved for questions. So send them to me and I'll, I will ask Josh at the end when he's finished talking. Um, you'll get the odd poll come up um, on your screen. Um, which just keeps us, um, again, being a bit more interactive. Hi in Dubai. That's Dubai, Qatar. Um, pretty even part of it, but I suppose Australia is a bit further. So Alan might win at the moment. Um, slides. Josh, will the slides be available afterwards for people if they want to see them again? Um, I can send some resources out, but, um, normally because of the... Um some of the uh, partners that we've got on there. We don't send all of them out, so it'll be a doctored presentation. I can certainly put one, I'm sure. Okay, brilliant. Uh, Neil, we can only see what's being said if people, oh, yeah. Absolutely, good point, Neil. Um, so if you're sending a message in the chat function, as I wasn't, um, just make sure it's set to all panelists and attendees, and then um, your message can be seen by everyone. Thanks for that, Neil. Uh, so slides will be available. Um, we've now got to grips with YouTube and uh, have been fully confirmed so we can start putting more and more videos up on our YouTube channel which will, the link will be sent out to you. So all of our previous webinars are being edited at the moment um, and we will put them up there as well so you can have them. Um, CPD certificates. <coughs> CPD certificates will be sent to everybody who's attended the entire presentation um, and we hope to get them out to you either today or tomorrow. Now we've got the hang of that as well. So that's pretty much it from me. Um, so I'm going to introduce Josh Rayner from What Three Words, who's going to talk to you about how the, the app can be used for event safety, crowd safety, uh, increasing response to medical incidents and, and other incidents. 
um, and I, I, as I've just admitted publicly, until recently I haven't even looked at it myself yet. Um, but after going through it with Josh last week, I can still see some real benefit to using this um, app within your crowd safety planning or your, your event safety planning. So I'm going to shut up and pass it over to Josh. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Andy. Um, yeah, I also just wanted to thank you for setting this up um, with CST. I mean, it's really, it was really appreciated. And um, thank you, everyone, for attending um, I think for sharing information and skills and you know sort of all the rest in it bit while um people have got time to sort of consider is really important um particularly in this sort of you know sharing industry um so let's get cracking um as many as many people here know um and as lots of other people um, will be aware from speaking to me or seeing me speak um when working at events talking about location can be really difficult um so we know that large events and most events are not covered by traditional addresses um, this can be for various reasons. You can have, you know, large greenfield sites, take Glastonbury for example, 900 acre site, hundreds of thousands of people. Unless you sort of know the site really well, talking about a very specific location can be really, really difficult. Um, and this is only getting more difficult as uh, events and festivals are sort of moving to more and more niche areas. You've got more international festivals going sort of off the beaten track and up into the mountains and you know towards the coast um and even more adventurous ones like this which i'm not even sure where this is but i'm sure that <laughs> policing it or organizing a sag group for that would be a massive nightmare uh this could be the future of events i'm sure some of you have seen this uh, recently i think this was in denmark i believe um who knows what the future holds for events of the current current climate but the same problems um are still uh still apply talking about location can be really difficult particularly for large greenfield sites um and you'd also think that traditional venues for events would be easy to talk about um but this isn't always the case um, when you Google a location, a stadium, um, a sort of greenfield site, or even you know a large a large site, if you put the pin, it's geocoded to the middle of the site. But the entrance you might need will be you know on the fringes or one specific entrance, whether that's deliveries, emergency access, tickets. Um, you know, depending on where you need to go, like geocoding doesn't always get you to the right place. Um, the world can be a hard place to navigate. This is particularly true true for going to foreign countries where you might not be able to read the language but even in the UK you've got duplicate addresses addresses move um, on the top right you can see geocoded to the wrong locations where you have you type in what you think is the address Google pins it over there but the actual location is half a mile down the road uh, I'm from rural Oxfordshire um, and I know that postcodes um, are less than ideal in most times and they don't get you sometimes even to the right village um, so traditional addresses not always just you know don't cut the mustard um, and we seem to love these in the UK these long paragraphs describing how to get access to a site uh, or for a holiday home in Wales. Um, I know we've got some Australians attending uh, and uh, thought I found this fact out the other day which seems a bit insane that there's over 500 George streets in Australia <laughs> so unless you're talking about a very specific one and you know where um, you might end up going to the wrong place without meaning to. Uh, fortunately, um, there is a system, a universal system that does exist. Uh, it's very accurate um, and you know it's, uh, it's highly it's easy to converse if you're a machine. But uh, machine to machine coordinates are very good. Uh, human to machine and human to human. People just don't use coordinates. Um, I used to actually work in the maritime industry and it's amazing how often people get coordinates wrong, uh, particularly when they're relaying them over a phone or if they're doing it under a sense of urgency, they just they're not really applicable for people who are under high pressure situations. Uh, enter what three words? Um, so as I'm sure most of you know, for those that don't, um, what three words, here we go, sorry, has divided the world into a grid of three by three meters square. And we have given each one a unique three word address. That means the only piece of information you ever need to refer back to that location is just three words. You don't need coordinates, you don't need street addresses, and you don't need landmarks. You can refer to anywhere on earth uh, with just three words. This is all that's going on uh, on the back end. Um, our API is just converting coordinates for that particular location into a three word address and back again. 
we're not reinventing the wheel. We're basically just making coordinates much more easy, easy to articulate when you are talking about them. Uh, and as I said before, every square has a unique three word address. So the problems that this solves means that if you're looking at a site like this, uh, you're looking at going back to our Glastonbury example, <clears throat> um, someone comes up to you, you're a security steward or you're an event organizer, an incident has happened, someone's friend is in trouble and you try and get, okay, well, where do we need to send our, send our resources? Where's your friend? Uh, he's in the orange tent. Brilliant, okay. Doesn't really tell me much in this scenario. Uh, I mean, there's lots of orange tents, they're quite as fast out. But if that person could give you the three word address, headlight walks picked, you can say that or type that into the app and then you would be able to navigate your way there. The same is true for regular sites. You can use them for small festivals, big festivals, you know, for any sort of um, application when it comes to talking about location. Uh, this is a classic one. You've got these in this sort of more glamping style uh, venues where you have lots of the same tent, then it gets even more confusing because you can't even say the white TP. They're all the white TP, but now you would be able to say remind kite swoop. Um, what three words also has a really strong uh, auto suggest also suggest technology built in the back. Uh, as you can see here, this person has typed in flid cult soap. Flid and cult, obviously not words. But based on the location of where this user was typing the three word address, it gives the suggested three word address as filled count soap based on that person's location. Um, another thing that we have also done <clears throat> is to put similar sounding addresses really, really far apart. Uh, so for example, table chair lamps and table chair lamp uh, are on different sides of the planet. One of them is near Sydney, one of them is in New Jersey. The idea here is that if you put similar sounding addresses close to each other, there's room for confusion if you if you misheard it or someone mistyped it, whereas you're probably going to know if you're going to go to Sydney or if you're going to go to New Jersey. Um, we have also translated the map uh, and now in its 44th language, which was Welsh. Um, so every single square has 44 addresses uh, in 44 languages. Um, and as some, if any of you are bilingual here, you'll quickly realize that they're not translations of each other. So each one has a unique three word address. So the idea here is that um, the words are weighted inside their own word lists so that um, in they're weighted in terms of spellability, memorability, uh, how often they come up in conversation, how culturally significant are they, that sort of thing. Um, and the more user friendly and easy to remember the words are, um, the more they feature in that country um, with uh, that, you know, that speaks that language. So for example, dog, cat, spoon, table, lamp, all the easy words will be in Australia, America um, and the UK. And then all the Russian words that are easy to uh, remember and say will be in the Russia, in Russia. And their hard to remember words will be everywhere else. Um, Going on to what What Three Words has been doing, um, What Three Words is used by thousands of businesses um, in over 170 countries. These are some of the more um, significant partners that we've worked with. Um, some of them you recognise, some of them you don't. Um, but the sort of purpose of this is that they all represent different industries, um, and they're all saving the same problem every time, which is talking about location. Um, so you've got the UK Power Networks. Quite a, quite a sort of obvious one there when people are reporting incidents like down power lines, their internal crews use what three words to tell each other where the, where the incident has occurred. Uh, the same is true for Transport for London um, and then and Network Rail. Uh, and you've also got logistics companies in there like Aramex and DB Schenkner who use it for delivery drop-offs and pickups. Um, and then you also have the more sort of tourist traveling based ones like Lonely Planet who uh, included in their Mongolia and Saudi Arabia, <coughs> Saudi Arabia editions, three word addresses for um, all of the locations in the book. This means that rather than trying to learn Mongolian or even say it phonetically in English, such as this example here, the Mandaholton Dunga Gobi uh, Hotel, you can just say seeping, expanding, defensively, and you'll be able to find that location. Uh, this is another example called the Small Luxury Hotels of the World. Uh, they have also included their three word addresses for all the hotels in their books. 
Um, we have also been included into some ride sharing apps, ride hailing apps as well. Uh, this is Cabify and this means that you can give a three word address uh, for a drop off location in their app. If you're going somewhere, um, you know that where a traditional address doesn't always drop you off in the right location. Um, and <clears throat> the next slide I'm going to show you is a video that went out about two years ago, I believe, um, and sort of showcases uh, what three words is partnership with Mercedes-Benz. Um, Mercedes-Benz was the far first car company to integrate what three words uh, into their cars. It's still there if you if you have a Mercedes-Benz system with the with the um, Mercedes UX way feature where you can talk to your car, you could give it a three word address right now and it will take you to that location. Um, I'm going to put the video on, it's only like a minute and a half, um, but it's quite uh, sort of high tempo and uh, sort of corporate, but it gets, a, it gets across um, how the voice function works really well. Our customers love to move from A to B, from here to there, from home to who knows where. They are endless explorers, non-stop navigators. Freedom is their destination, and they want to get there in the easiest way. But addresses don't always get people where they need to be. Small mistakes are easy to make and can send people hours in the wrong direction. And even if they did say Church Road, London, there's a few of those around, and arriving at the wrong one can get a bit awkward. Okay, so an address can point you to a building, but when it comes to finding the right entrance, you're on your own, my friend. And what if you want to go here? Or here? Even here? Enter what three words? It's built for the smoothest and most accurate voice experience. Say three words to navigate anywhere. And we mean anywhere. Navigate to what three words brain bolts deals. Cake, sleep, found. Dreamy microwave bluff. Nice. As the first car company to build in what three words, we're leading the way in navigation and mobility. Our customers are the first to benefit, and they will love that, by the way. With what three words along for the ride, we're working on smarter ways for people to get around. Together, we can make getting from A to B as easy as one, two, three. So you get, you get the purpose of that. So the idea there is that you can just input a three word address into your car. Um, whereas if I'm sure some of you here um, have experienced, if you've got a, you know, the voice input feature with your car, the frustration of it mishearing or giving you duplicate addresses. Um, our office is a really good example. It's on 65 uh, Alfred Road. Um, there's actually two of those in London. So if you said that to your car, it wouldn't know which one you were talking about unless you knew the postcode as well. Um, whereas if you just say build count soap, it will take you to exactly the right spot. <clears throat> um, continuing on with the partners that we work with, and um, we also work with the AA. So if you're a member of the AA and you break down uh, somewhere that you're finding quite tricky to describe, um, if you have the What Three Words app, you can give them a three word address over the phone and they'll be able to help help get their guys out to you and help locate you quicker. Um, some of you may know and some of you might have heard uh, or sort of you know friends who work in the emergency services in the UK. Um, we're now used by well over 90 um, out of 115 um, emergency services in the UK. <clears throat> this has been really really positive. Um, they get a really good response out of using it. They um, see a reduction in uh, call handling time, people being able to just provide their location when they can't do it normally. Um, and we've heard from organisations on the ground using it, sort of passing it internally when they're talking about location as well. Um, this is the idea, you know, you've got rural uh, people out on the beat or you've got emergency services and people can just give a three word address when they're talking about an incident. Um, the feedback has been really good. We have literally thousands of examples now where um, emergency services uh, have been tweeted about or tweeting themselves, talking about using what three words um, that is helping coordination between services and also um, and also just being used uh, to help respond to incidents. Um, some of them are more uh, sort of interesting than others. Uh, this next one is my favourite. 
this chap somehow got stuck up a tree when he was paragliding, um, but was unable to describe where he was, <laughs> um, and then was able to give a three-word address um, to DW5 patrol who were able to find him uh, and then get him down from the tree. Um, we see lots of this, people sort of engaging with the emergency services more than usual and talking about using what three words when they've had incidents, um, which is really, really good. It shows that we're helping them um, and we're trying to help, you know, reduce call times and help save lives. Um, I think the next video is a, um, is a real world video that we were sent by CAMS Fire um, from an incident. Uh, so, oh no, sorry. Um, I don't know, yeah, it must be the next one, but I don't know if any of you remember this. This, um, this was an incident back in uh, February. Uh, some tourists uh, had basically thought it was a good idea to climb Ben Nevis uh, in the middle of a blizzard, wearing nothing more than t-shirts and sneakers. Uh, they, <coughs> they fortunately <coughs> were able to use the uh, what three words to um, articulate to mountain rescue where they were, um, which was really, really good. Obviously that's positive uh, because the app works offline. That means that um, they didn't need signal to be able to get their three word address and then one of them left from where they were to go find signal and then pass that three word address over to the mountain rescue team. Uh, this is the video I was I'm talking about, sorry. Uh, this is a 999 call to Bedfordshire Fire and Rescue back in August uh, 2019. Um, it articulates exactly how an ideal 999 call should go if that person has the app and how easy it is to give a three word address and how quickly they can locate you. Hi service, what's the emergency? Hi there, um, I'm out running and there's basically a wood on fire. Do you use the app, what three words? I do, I don't know yeah. I run it to, hold on. What's your name is town? Belong and in Bedfordshire. Lunham, okay. Yeah. I'm literally in a field. <laughs> Are you by the river? <coughs> to the river? I've been running along the river, so I saw the flames and the smoke, so i just come to investigate. And it's basically a big tree that's on fire. Uh, right, so I'm going to locate the three words, loving paddlers and bookshelf. Okay, let's have a look. Slightly, I don't know which direction, probably slightly to the north of, what, of that. So loving paddlers and bookshelf. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right, so I've got you now. So I think the nearest main road to you is probably the Tempsford Road that goes over yeah, the little humpback is. bridge with yeah, the lights. Exactly, yeah, I'm parked along from that actually. Okay, all right, I'm going to get so them to come out there. to there and then they I mean, should be able to see it. Yeah, they'll see the smoke. Okay, that's brilliant and thank okay. you. And thank you all for right, using no the app, that's really helpful. Thanks, no worries, bye. bye. Um. And it should be as easy as that. Um, and that is normally in a situation where you would have someone verbally trying to describe where they were, uh, which could result in the emergency services going in the wrong direction. Um, Josh, can I ask a question now? Yes, of course, yeah, jump in. Have you had any feedback from the emergency services and how much quicker that is by using the app as opposed to traditional methods of getting people to give addresses and descriptions of where they are and things like that? Yeah, we have. Um, we it sort of it really depends on the uh, on the force involved and how willing they are to give any numbers about call taking. Um, we haven't got, had specific numbers, but the anecdotal evidence is you know so sort of obvious and tweeted about by the emergency services themselves uh, on their official accounts. But okay. <clears throat> the sort of anecdotal evidence is that yeah, it's a lot quicker because you don't have to a sort of when you are inputting that um, information as a call handler, using a lot, lot more time more on again to somebody else. So every time you do that, you're making it longer. Whereas just down to three words, it just, it's that quick to take and therefore it's that quick to pass on as well. Um, but yeah. if like the official, in terms of um, quite like quanti quantifiable um, amounts, we don't have any, I'm afraid. Okay, and has that been built into their systems or do they just run the app? Um, <clears throat> good question. Good question. Um, so it depends um, is, the, is the answer. Um, and basically, um, there's a couple of ways in which the emergency services can be um, integrated. And that would be um, either their CAD software, which is their, um, com uh, command and direct software, they can um, receive a three word address over the phone and then directly input that into their handling uh, system like Stereo or Storm. Uh, and then that 
uh, you can put it directly in and then that is converted if needed into a coordinate which then can be passed on. That needs the uh, CAD provider themselves to be happy with an integration, um, which isn't always the case, but um, that's quite a lot of them. There's, a, a, I think it's about a 50% that have a direct CAD integration. But again, it depends on the CAD system and how much they're willing to pay for that. In terms of uh, the other way, um, as I've said before, um, our app is free to use and so is our map site. Um, that just means that uh, in some call handling centers, you can have police who are there with a, um, uh, with, sorry, just things on my screen. Sorry, that's my fault. Did I know that it was free? I did know that it was free. <laughs> <laughs> um, apparently I can't look, I just minimize that. Um, yes, uh, the, um, that just means that the cool handlers just have uh, the, map, the free map site up uh, in, their, in their control room. So when someone over the phone passes a three word address to them, they can input that into the map site, then that, they can convert that to a coordinate, which then that coordinate can then be inputted into their, um, into their command and, and direct system. Um, okay, and I guess to relate that then to an event setting, to a crowd safety or an event safety setting. So yep. um, again, I'm gonna sound really different because I haven't looked at this. I've only looked at it on the app. How does, does it work from a web, does it work from the website as well? Yeah, there's just a, a page on the website that is basically just a super side version of the app that you see on your phone. Um, it does all the same stuff apart from without the photo functionality because it's not as easy to do it on not a non mobile. Um, it gives you a bit more clarity on a, you know, use it on a computer because you can see better. So um, it's, it still uses all we provide on our map site and on our app is just the grid. Um, we still use Google Maps as our sort of background lay satellite view and otherwise. Um, it just it, the same functionality is there that when you click on a square, if you want to convert that three word address into any format of coordinates, that's very easy to do. Okay, so we could we could have this on a large screen in a control room. Absolutely, yeah. yeah that's um, that's exactly what we saw when um, I was in, uh, involved in helping uh, the Vitality Big Half in London um, uh, with uh, Neil Minter, who I think is on the call as he well. Certainly is. Um, and yeah, that was what was happening there. Someone would, one of the stewards would call in with a three word address that would be taken by one of the cool handlers or the operations team there. That three word address would be put into our map site and then converted into a coordinate if necessary. And then that could be passed along. Brilliant. Thanks for that. Sorry. Uh, and this is now sort of neatly going on from what the questions you just asked. This is the sort of more events focused um, section. Um, so. These are some of the partners that I've worked with. Um, some of the people here might recognize them. Uh, apologies if they're not in proper chronological order, <laughs> uh, but these are just the ones that I've worked with um, personally since uh, January of this year, uh, now that I've sort of taken on quite a lot of the um, events work uh, with what three words. Um, there is some overlap and the more, the more people get involved and the more people use what three words, the more useful it becomes. Uh, and I think the real, one of the real uses um, for it is if it becomes any sort of standard, if you've ever had to move staff around from event, from site to site to site to site, or over a weekend from different sites, from what I've understood and from what people in the industry have told me is that every event and every site uses a different system when talking about location. It could be a grid, it could be landmarks, it could be, could be a decimalization system based on distance if it's a marathon. Um, so that means every time you've got a new member of staff on site, they have to be retrained. Um, and if, if what three words becomes any sort of standard, then as soon as that person arrives on site, they're ready to go if you start giving them a three word address uh, or they can pass one on. I think what I like about that, Josh, is I've had it a number of times in the past where the police have turned up specifically with a, a nice shiny gridded map. And it's completely different <laughs> yeah. to, to what everyone else has got. So I kind of like that. <laughs> you know, a uniformed approach, yeah. no pun intended. Exactly. <laughs> Very good. Um, no, that's exactly it. And I think the, the sort of backbone to events um, has always been the emergency services in a, in a sort of response sense, I think. Um, and the, the fact that they have sort of led the charge on this means that everyone else is kind of free to adapt. And if they do, then it makes it should make their lives a lot easier. Um, so the three sort of core benefits that I see to utilizing what three words in an events uh, setting or for events company uh, are sort of these three, I'll go into a little bit of a deep dive on um, all of them, but uh, the first one is sort of efficient planning and logistics. So what does this mean? I think that um, if you were using it to talk about location, you can assist in pre-site setup and accurate on-site navigation. 
you've not arrived on site, it's a large brownfield site, greenfield site, or a, even a sort of citywide festival, you can give a three word address to, you know, where the barriers need to be dropped off, where the port need to go, um, talking around the right entrance, the emergency entrance, you know, up and around the corner from wherever, um, and that sort of thing. Um, for accurate and optimized stuff positioning across the site, I think this could be more beneficial for, you know, long distance events, marathons, um, your long distance cycling, where you might have um, sort of stewards every half mile or every mile. Uh, and then you can, when you need to replace those people at the end of the shift or initially send them out, you can just give them a three word address and that's where they need to be. Um, and unified cross organizational communication, as well as being a mouthful, I think is also one of the most important. Um, the more companies use it, the more useful it becomes. Um, and it's the same with the emergency services. One of the things that I found sort of shocking uh, when I first sort of looking into the emergency services with what three words is how, and some of the people watching might be able to, you know, back this up and might feel the same thing is how disconnected all of their, all of their information systems are, uh, whether they're talking about locations or just comms, like an incident could happen with the police, which then that location has to be passed to the ambulance. They could have it as a GPS coordinate, but then that has to be passed verbally to the ambulance crews or with the traditional address. So there's no, not really any information sharing there. Whereas if what three words can become a standard, then that can just be shared straight away, which makes things a lot easier. Uh, this is a piece of software called um, OnePlan, um, where uh, you can sort of plan for a three word, a plan for an event. Um, this is, I believe, Buckingham Palace, and you can, you've got your port lose your maybe your ticket stalls here, um, or whatever the event may be, um, and everything on that, in that event can be given a three word address that obviously pertains to a real world three uh, uh, location with a three word address. Um, <clears throat> the next one sort of goes back to what we were talking about the emergency services, uh, effective safety operations. Um, I think this is really true for really large sites. Um, improving emergency response times um, can be critical. We've all, even if it only helps in you know one situation out of a hundred, someone's life could be on the line, so that could be really important. Um, I understand that signal is always a bit of an issue, um, but the app that hopefully you guys have downloaded and you're playing with works completely offline. You don't have to have any signal because it only works off GPS. Uh, and the function that I think is really useful is when you click on a, um, a location and then on the bottom of the screen, if you click navigate, to the left of that, there is a compass function and that will literally point you in the direction that you need to go to get to that location. And that's very, very useful for greenfield sites where the, where the satellite view doesn't really give you any information just because it's a huge blank canvas. Whereas, you know, just an arrow that says 50 meters that way, you can just make a beeline in that direction. Um, one of the other advantages, uh, depending on where you're based, um, is direct location communication with the emergency services. Um, as I said, um, what three words is, being used by uh, well over 90 out of 115. Uh, that isn't all of them, obviously. And if you're in an area where um, they don't use it and you pass it to them, that wouldn't cause issues because I'm sure that you'd have other ways of um, talking about location. But um, it's something to be mindful of, particularly where the location of the event is. We have the um, emergency integration uh, list on our website that everyone is free to have a look at. So you can see if um, for future events, are the ambulance crews in this region integrated what three words yes or no then that obviously helps make a decision makes a decision there um, in terms of live events and instant reporting this is a piece of software called we track um, i've been talking to these guys and they've done a sort of really neat integration where you can search a three-word address and input it when you're marking a response um, yeah that's been really good and there's sort of larger project management stuff as well. It means that you can, you know, log, a, log an instant exactly where it happened rather than, you know, someone qualitatively telling you, oh, it was down the end of the field and by the tree. This also is um, Control Events Manager. Same sort of thing as you can see down here. Uh, you've got a, the grid and that, uh, that particular pin has a three word address listed there. So it means that when you have um, uh, incidents, you can log them with a three word address location and know exactly where that happened. Um, and the last one of the sort of three primary uh, benefits here, I think, um, depending on who's, who's watching, um, I don't know, but if you're more of a sort of on the comm side of events, um, this can be really useful. So an enhanced attendee experience. Um, 
is you know particularly useful for larger sites and as you can see here the picture on the right is of Hyde Park's Winter Wonderland. Uh, this is the Gold Gate which was uh, with Lime's Petal Robots. Different entrances for different people and um, they had a family entrance, um, picketed entrance and then they had delivery entrance all that had a three word address. Uh, so it can help um, improve attendee arrival experience and help them arrive at the correct entrance. Um, for larger sites as well, um, providing maps, as I, I've got some on some slides after this, for larger sites, giving maps out can also help people navigate the site. Um, this is a picture of Wembley, as I'm sure many of you will recognise. Uh, this is a BTS World Tour, which is a, a Korean boy band group. Um, and they uh, basically got one of these maps and they sent it out to all of their fans because they would have lots of people in the Wembley area who might not know the way around as it's quite a big site. Uh, and as you can see on here, they put, gave three word addresses for each of the uh, each of the sort of points of interest across the um, event, uh, helping to people navigate the site. Um, this goes back to the Winter Wonderland example. All of these different entrances have three word addresses that were helping people to find their way around. Um, I don't know if you've been to a high park Winter Wonderland, but it's pretty big, it's pretty bright, and it's pretty confusing. Um, so having this, particularly if you're there with young kids, could be really helpful. Um, this was some more of the common stuff that was going out um, from the BTS uh, world tour. They were sharing three word addresses um, out on the Twitter feed, trying to get people to queue at the right location um, and sort of make sure that people had the smoothest way of finding their way around. This also works on super small festivals. This is a Towsy Festival uh, back in 2016. These guys um, gave every single stall uh, a three-word address. Um, and this, this is another way of going to the pre-site setup. You know, if you've got hundreds of different food vendors and small bars and sort of boutique shops and stuff, they will always have a plot, but you could give them their plot with a three-word address. That means that you don't have to show them exactly where to go when they arrive on site. Uh, this was a little gig festival down in South Africa. Uh, this is a bit more of a sort of um, dynamic use of it, putting, putting them on signs and letting people use them to navigate around the festival with the app. Uh, this was a super imaginative uh, example. Uh, the band Imagine Dragons um, did an album called Evolve and they found the three word address, uh, Imagine Dragon Evolve. Um, and you could search it now. If you searched it in the app, um, you'd find out that it's in northern Canada. It's quite near the Arctic Circle. Um, so I've got quite a lot of respect for the people that went all the way up there to find a uh, guitar uh, with all of the uh, sort of merchandise in there for it, uh, which was a pretty cool way of doing some PR. Uh, and this is, I think, one of my favorites as well. This is a beer brewed in uh, California called Fear Movie Lions and List Loud React. Um, both of these are the three word addresses of where their particular stills are on site. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much. Yeah, I look forward to doing some Q&A with you guys. Thanks, Josh. That's really interesting. Lots of things to think about and um, lots of uses for, for the crowd safety related and event safety in the control room that I can see. Mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned to you before, I say, having that on a large screen um, where people, stewards can call something in yeah, um, I can see some some definite benefits from that. Just remind me to uh, to send Paul Foster an invoice for sponsorship as well with the. Uh, <laughs> <on there. laughs> um, okay, so we've got a few questions coming in. Yeah, Ooh, already. Right. Oh, that's boosting up quite quickly as well. Um, so the, one of the, the most popular questions at the moment: if you were using the app in English, yeah, yet a partner agency were using the app in say Arabic. Mm -hmm. Would it highlight the same location or would you be required for both users to utilize the same language? Okay, so that's a really good Great. question. Um, that, was one, that was a really good question. Um, that was some of the initial feedback we had when we sort of started, uh, started doing languages. So <clears throat> you have the ability in the app to have a dual language function. So that means that you can have a primary language and a secondary language. So, for example, my, I've set mine at the moment. Mine is uh, in Korean. I've, so I, I don't speak Korean, but I'm showing it to a friend. So I've got mine in English, and then below it, I have it in Korean. So that means that when you share that location, that person who you're sharing it to will get to the first primary one, but then underneath, they will have the secondary one there. And then when they click it, it will still be the same square, but it will have an English and an Arabic one. 
next to them, so you can use them completely in tandem. Brilliant. And if, in case there was any confusion about the languages, um, the fact that each square doesn't translate directly doesn't matter because you're still talking about the same square. So as long as that, if you'll be, if it's being sent over a WhatsApp, that square doesn't matter because it means that you can still navigate to it as soon as you click navigate. So the fact that you can't say that square doesn't matter. You can then immediately switch that square to English if you'd like. So you, if you, if, if Andy, you sent me an Arabic three word address, only in Arabic without even using the secondary language function. Um, on my phone, it would come up immediately in Arabic, but then if I double click it, it would then switch to English. Amazing, that's brilliant. Okay, have you noticed, I guess this is a question from my point of view, I'm just thinking as we're going along now, given the current situation, obviously there's not really any events going on around the world, but there's incidents still happen, no doubt. Yep. I don't know. Do you get any sort of data on usage of it still at the moment and if it's still being used heavily? Yeah, so we we don't we track sort of overall downloads, um, and we can see um, sort of metrics of you know how people are using the app and are they using this piece more or less. And from that, we've sort of seen it kind of stagnate. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've recently launched into India, which obviously has a colossal <laughs> colossal population. So yeah. off the back of that, even with lockdown, there has been a sort of over the last few months of quite a sharp increase in general usage. In the UK, um, people just aren't as tra traveling as much and um, people aren't talking about locations. So we have seen, you know, sort of leveling off as it were. Um, but yeah. the actual numbers just um, aren't something that we should share regularly. Okay, brilliant. Uh, next question. Does the app work for somebody whose 4G is offline or they've, they've got no data as such? And so, where the big signal is weak? I know we've discussed this as well, so this is a be really interesting answer for people. I think. Yeah, so as, if, as long as that person um, has the app downloaded before their signal goes down, then you can, so, so for example, you could be on a greenfield site where all of your staff have what three words pre-downloaded, you've done all the training, that sort of thing. And then because you know that the signal is bad, you then switch to radios when you're on site, it would work perfectly then, it would work absolutely fine. So you can still, radio a three-word address over the radio type it in and you can still see where that is because the app works offline okay cool i'm just testing that as he's speaking and yes it seems to be working so <laughs> excellent with airflow mode okay brilliant so the, the next question is um out of curiosity how is it funded yeah, Could it be okay. run out of funds income and be stopped once we've embraced it as essential? Could it be what, sorry? Um, out of curiosity, how is it funded? Okay. Um, okay. So, okay. no, really good question because the, the app is free, the map is free, the work we do with the emergency services, obviously, we just you know, do charge for that. They can just use what three words. Um, so the way that what three words makes money um, is when a software provider integrates what three words into their tech so that is when they have their own software that you know at some point tags something with coordinates or has an, a, a, an address or a coordinate input and then they want to add a three word address api on top of that so that when it's clicked on a location and a and a coordinate is given our api can kick in and just switch that to a three word address uh, Mercedes-Benz is a really good example of that. So all our API does in that when you say a three word address to the car is when you say build count so that goes into the car, the car then sends that to um, uh, the onboard computer that then knows the, the three word the coordinates for that three word address. That then pings inside the car as the navigation system and it's done. Um, the way the companies can pay for that is they can normally have a license agreement pay year on year or um, lots of normal co companies some sort of smaller companies can sign up for an API key which um, then will be charged at a, a sort of tiered API usage um, which uh, there's a thousand free a month which is what is this is only when you search uh, for a three-word address displaying a three-word address um, even in your tech is always going to be free um, it's just something that you already have the location that you're talking about, so you're just displaying a three-word address above that. It's when you input a three-word address and you need the location of the GPS coordinates. That's one API search that we would charge for. Um, and you, if you were an API user, you get 
a thousand three of those a month, and then as you go ten thousand, it would be thirty-five pounds, and then it goes up from there. But it's quite small numbers. Okay, brilliant. So just to clarify this, because I didn't understand this at first, and just to sort of confirm what you're saying now, yeah, yeah. is that all of the people on this uh, webinar now could go, and, if we were allowed to run events tomorrow, could go and run an event tomorrow, use this software, use the app, and it won't cost them anything. Absolutely, that's um, that's kind of what I'm encouraging. And like, um, what if you guys are watching this and being a bit skeptical, the thing that we get out of this um, as, a, as a, an app provider is downloads and usage and awareness. That's kind of the modus operandi for us, but, but the app isn't something we'll ever charge for. It's just a really useful tool for events. Um, and I think it can really help. Um, but using the app is free, using the map is free. Um, on the end of this call, um, we've recently just finished our um, events toolkit that has loads of sort of basic training docs and briefs that can be used and branded however you like, and that's also free. So um, we'll put that up. Um, I think Andy can send that out. <clears throat> uh, and you guys can sign up to it and use it um, and train your staff in any way you see fit. Um, but also, I'm always here to you know help you guys get the most out of it. Um, I've seen different ways of it being used, and it's always sort of nice to kind of troubleshoot troubleshoot an idea, um, particularly if it's you know an unusual event um, or there's lots of organizations involved, um, then I'm more than happy to get involved and help get into the situation. Brilliant, and there's a similar related question for this is, as, as well. Um, is there a fee for publishing event locations and inviting guests to use the What Three Words app? Nope, completely encouraged, if anything. <laughs> um, yeah, so you if you, if you um, so that winter wonderland example was great they put signs up with three word addresses they put that map that i showed uh, this map uh, this map this map went out to uh, all all people who bought tickets this just was a pdf attachment that's completely free um, we encourage people to do that because it helps um, attend the experience um, but yeah completely displaying a three word address um, is, is is free Brilliant. And, and that's really key. That's what I couldn't get my head around at first. It's, it's free to use. You can go and use it tomorrow if you're lucky enough to run an event tomorrow. Um, and build it into your crowd safety planning, build it into your event safety planning. I can see obvious benefits of it. Quicker response, quicker access to casualties if, if someone's injured, um, or fires, in, or disorder, or anything really. Yeah. Could be used for, so. Yeah, and that's really the, the idea with that is that um, exactly as you, as you um, whoever asked that question was saying that yeah we uh, people use the app they download it and then the more likely they are to then search a three word address in their Mercedes car or order something um, when they see a logistics provider can use a three word address so that's what when the idea is to boost awareness and then when people know about what three words they're more likely to use it in one of our commercial aspects. Brilliant. So. <clears throat> another question, oh, another one's just come up up the rankings there. Can this be used within buildings to find certain rooms? <laughs> um, good question, we get it a lot, but you could, if you knew where it was and it was a massive building, but it's based off coordinates, so the map is so I would never encourage people to use that because it's not it's not really the, the point I guess is the idea is that help going up to right up to an entrance that's where it's useful because you can guarantee that is where the entrance is specifically because I can see it the coordinates are there and so pro anything pro sorry no no you go so it probably work well in somewhere like a university university campuses yes on the so on the if you have them on the outside um, I, I went to Nottingham and it's got a, a large campus uni and I also went to Nottingham Trent and it's the same, that's the sort of city, so it's two different styles, both of them completely confusing to get around. Um, a few words would have been a great help actually because I missed a few lectures. But um, inside I wouldn't advise it, so even, even with stadiums where you have a large, obviously a large open roof and it's a huge site, um, I wouldn't advise using it there you can um, if you're comfortable with that but it's it's the act as soon as you've got anything in the way even if it is a thin metal roof the GPS function on your um, phone won't be as accurate as you as you know is kind of needed for that instance okay cool and um, you talked about making it as, as a 
stand, trying to make what three words are standard in events. Um, how are you working to achieve that? <clears throat> really good question. Um, by doing things like this, <laughs> actually, um, trying to trying to boost awareness, trying to get good case studies, um, trying to prove its usefulness. So I saw it for myself um, when I was at the Vitality Half big event, tens of thousands of runners. I was sat in the Palestra building uh, with numerous organizations um, and watching three word addresses get pulled in from stewards as an incident happened, taken by the call handler, then that was passed out to whoever it was most needed, if it was medical, if it was uh, ambulance teams, if it was security or if it was um, barriers teams and it worked. I literally watched it and I watched it, you know, save time, save duplicate incidents from being raised of the same incident because um, you had a woman who collapsed at this, you know, this, this part of the road uh, to two incidents come in but the, you then get the three word addresses and you find out that they're next door to each other so it's probably the same incident. Um, so watching it solve problems in real time has kind of sort of boosted I think the argument for it to become a standard. Um, talking to people uh, like Eric Stewart at UK CMA um, and sort of some of the guys at Lair Yog as well, um, sort of local events authorities groups trying to help it get in so there's a helicopter outside. Um, <laughs> trying, yeah, trying to make it um, any sort of standard or at least a sort of a recommendation on SAG groups I think would be a really good start. Okay, that's a good good suggestion. So recommending it to SAG groups. I know there's a few people on, on this webinar today who are actually involved in SAG groups from a, a local authority point of view as well. So maybe it's um, something that could be recommended. It's certainly got its benefits without a doubt. Um, okay, so um it's done. The next one. If you utilized in an event control and network connectivity was lost, presumption would be you'd lose the ability. Is it possible to download an overlay of the site footprint with what three words gridding to access offline in a contingency? Good question, Barry. Very good question. Um definitely it depends on the size of event. We can do um we can do one-off high-res images of events. This is something that we've done um, for Glastonbury for a number of years. Um, we've taken a high-res picture, put a grid on it, and then provided that to some of their core teams. We've used that for logistics. Um, it's not been used widely, but it's used by the real core staff who have been on site. Um, but we can do the same thing for other events, I think. Um, but also, if there's, any, if there's any sort of software where there is any map overlay, it's possible to put the what the words grid on that. And then the obviously, as we were just discussing, the fallback would always be um, using your app where um, connectivity would still function because it would work offline. Okay, brilliant. Good question. Um, yeah, an another charge to Paul Foster at One Plan. Um, is it integrated <laughs> into One Plan as standard? Uh, good question. Um, I don't actually know. Um, that would be a question to ask Paul. Okay, I'll give him a ring later. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, um, Catherine, I'll, I'll uh, answer that one offline for you. <laughs> um, I've done that one. From a safeguarding point of view, what safety protocols are in place if this app is available to anyone for free? Uh, what do you mean? Is if people can understand someone overhears a three word address, then they know where you're talking about. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose uh, I, it's no more. I think that's probably no or more or less safe than if you're, you know, yelling across a room the actual location that you're trying to talk about. Um, if you've got somebody who is you know, a security incident and you're talking about the main entrance and you're on the on your radio talking to the control room and you're saying incident in the main entrance, it's not really more, any more or less safe than if you were saying, um, you know, Mount Tigers Hotel. Um, so. I can understand the misgiving there because you could be talking about somewhere yeah. sensitive, but I think um, mm -hmm. in that case, that would just have to be something that you do internally. You would either put all of your main locations with a three word address and then some of the more secure locations, maybe you wouldn't. It's not, we're not a silver bullet that's going to, you know, solve all location problems and security problems, but we're just another tool in the toolbox to be used uh, as and when. Yeah, I guess, I guess that question, I can see where that question's come from actually, because things like, um, if you've got stewards start giving um, locations of, of children that have been found and 
um, and in open mic situations where people aren't using um, earpieces and things like that. So from a safeguarding point of view, uh, in that instance, I can see why that question's been asked. So, yeah, good question. Uh, so I guess that comes down to your internal procedures and, and how you deal with that. And if you feel it's right to be using um, what three words addresses for certain types of incidents. Yeah, exactly. I think that is that comes down to the sort of uh, discretion in the team, the way the event is being operated on, and, and potentially like how secure the network is that you're talking over. Um, yeah, that's not we can't we don't provide any sort of security that goes on behind that. And the three word addresses are all public. Um, anyone mm -hmm. can use them and search them. Um, but that's that's the benefit. But you could you could see that as a drawback. But um, it's just a tool that's there to be used. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, Okay, when I open the app at the same location, it generates a different set of three words each time the app is used. Is it possible to lock or save the words? Uh, I think this person potentially hasn't, has maybe hasn't got their location services turned on. Um, ah, okay. So if you do that, it will just open anywhere. Um, and when you do open the app, um, it should generally if your location services are on, call to roughly where you are. Not exactly, because it's not been, you, there's a button on the bottom right that will then focus it on where you are. Um, but when you first open it, it should roughly go to where you are, but then that button on the bottom right will take you to the Okay, I think that does that for mine as well when I, I, I use it indoors. So yeah, it changes it slightly because of the GPS. Please. So if you're, um, my phone, my phone at the moment is connected to my Wi-Fi. So because it's my, because it's giving me the IP address for roughly where my phone is. I mean, it could be, I think the, the current accuracy is like 60 meters in any direction because the Wi-Fi is quite good. So it's uh, what three words is designed to be used outside when you have, you know, GPS line of sight. That's when you'll get accuracies of, you know, a few meters. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, if, there is yeah, ever, if, if there is any ever confusion um, for people and they're not sure why the three word address is popping up or just make sure that you tap the bottom on the bottom right takes you to your location and then just zoom in and also switching to satellite view on the bottom right might help people work out with, if they're trying to find the address of where they are now or a house yeah uh, that's an easy way to do it okay brilliant Okay, I think we, we may have answered this question, but just to uh, just to clarify, do API keys cost? Uh, API keys themselves are free. Uh, um, so signing up for one is free and you can get into our developer playground for free and see if you like the UX of it and how it might work in your app and see what the functionality might be. Um, but um, once we haven't got API billing on at the moment, when that goes live, um, there will be a tiered system that when you go over the thousand free ones you get a month, um, what the uh, sort of billing will then kick in. Um, but the way API keys themselves are free. Okay, brilliant. What size are the squares? <laughs> um, they're three by four meters. Uh, here in the US, that's about 10 feet. Uh, or anywhere else, that's about 10 feet. Uh, and just in, to answer any questions, there are 57 trillion of them. 57 trillion. How many noughts is that? Uh, I think 12. <laughs> I'm impressed you know. <laughs> I will never clue. <laughs> so I guess, one, have you considered it, or has any of your customers started to use this now for um, social distancing purposes? So looking at uh, certain sites, and picking the three by three boxes i guess thinking about it future proofing i guess event organizers could maybe sell a three by three space of their site um to ticket holders and that's their yeah. plot and use that to help with exactly distancing. yeah we've there's sort of there's been ideas before where for certain events if you had um a park you could pre-book your square which is your picnic spot or whatever that, you know, that location in there, or you can sponsor a square or that sort of thing. So there's, lo there's loads of application for this, for that sort of, um, that sort of uh, way of running it. Book stuff, um, like people can say, this is, not our, this is our address for this day, or this is our plot. 
Um, that's all obviously free to use, but that's a really good idea. Um, one thing we have seen is uh, sort of regional uh, suppliers um, use pre word addresses to help set up um, testing spots for COVID. Um, and we've seen a few instances of them trying to have, you know, the clean entrance with a free word address and the dirty entrance, with the free address, which I think is a really innovative use and helps guarantee, particularly if people are driving to these locations, just making sure they get the right one. Brilliant. Yeah, I was just, just thinking sort of when we do start getting events moving again, that might be a, a tool that we can consider using to spread people out on a site. Yeah. Okay, really, really good use of, of the software. Okay. Uh, more of a question relating to those who have used what three words in a festival setting. Mm -hmm. uh, is it reliant on personal mobile phones and the battery being charged, which can be difficult in greenfield sites? And how have you ensured everyone remains contactable to access? Um, again, this isn't something that we would get involved in per se. It's like uh, the what three words app is just. A publicly available tool for people to use. We've never mm -hmm. run that, so I've helped train people. I've helped give resources to companies to train their staff to use it at events. As soon as that happens, it's kind of we hand that over to them. It's then their responsibility to you know ensure that it works correctly and it's you know used in a safe way and helps people and does what it's built to do. Um, but in terms of making sure that people can use it properly like the best that we can do in that situation is try and help train training staff so they know this is something that's going to be on your phone it's something that people might say to you over the phone in an emergency situation so therefore it's best to have your phone charged up and that sort of thing um, but as soon as, as soon as we kind of people are free to use this I'm sure there are events that might have gone on that have used what that I don't even know about this isn't something uh, we're trying to keep an eye on it and help people use it but um, there's, there's people can just use it, so there's no way of us to ever guarantee that. But the best we can do is make sure that we'll help people to use it as best as possible. I guess the, the example you gave of Winter Wonderland is, is a really good use of, of the, the, the technology there. So you could potentially put signposts at, at key points with the what three words address. Yeah, so, um, they... so if, if someone's mobile phone dies because the battery's gone, then there's sort of key points close by to everywhere that contain that address yeah so this is what we've got here at the top uh, on this on this um, slide here is they had it they put physical signs up around the site as well with the free word address um, but we've got some good feedback brilliant so yeah that's certainly something to consider and put putting these on your signage um, yeah certainly Particularly if you've got a few smaller you know smaller regional festivals if you've got a car park that is a bit away from the main festival just making sure that people don't go the wrong way down the one-way street and then having to back up onto the main roads just classic classic sort of operation stuff where people are just going the wrong way this can really help yeah. you know parking is over here the main entrance is over here because they'll just type in festival let's go to the festival but if you just say that it's over here and then it's over here go to this one first drop your car then go to this one to go to the festival it tries to help you know streamline everyone's arrival and does it work best on mobile signal then? Well, it's GPS, isn't it? So it work without the mobile signal. So it doesn't help with accuracy if someone's create, connected to a Wi-Fi network or? Uh, it's best if it's not connected to a Wi-Fi network. Um, it's sort of a double, a double problem there because um, if you're connected to a Wi-Fi network, it kind of assumes you're anywhere within the network. And also you're likely to be inside, which means the GPS can't then get a signal. So it goes even wider then. Yeah. If you've got a Wi-Fi network and you're outside, you'll have GPS, which will help refine it to a smaller location. So if you have Wi-Fi across a site, but you're outside, you'll still get a pretty pretty accurate reading or just as accurate as you would. So it's a thing to sort of um, make sure everyone knows is because it is just going off the GPS on your phone, it will be as accurate as Google Maps, Apple Maps, Waze. It's using exactly the same technology. It's just mm -hmm. being presented in our app. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just trying to get a picture of, um, with obviously some events like football stadia, for example, when you get a large crowd, yeah. mo mobile signal dies anyway, um, a lot of the time. Um, yeah. So I'm just wondering if it, if it will still work in that yeah, no, so crowded that's, that's environment. The yeah, so that's the app, the app working offline. So even if, even if I've got a really bad signal and I've even got a really bad, I've got so. 
I've got no signal. I've got no 3G, but I've got the app. Um, someone then calls me, and I've got a really bad GPS signal as well because I'm by a stadium, it's kind of, kind of covered. Someone then radios in a three word address. I can then input that on my app, but the fact that I don't have a good reading doesn't mean that I won't get their location if I need to go to that place. If that person then tells me, yeah, table lamp spoon, if I put that in, I will still very easily be able to get to that place. Great. So I'm seeing a usage there for um, football stadiums again. Uh, mm -hmm. with visiting away fans who maybe not been there before, they, they want to know where their designated entrances are. Yeah. Um, maybe even designated pubs on the way um, that they're allowed to drink in. Um, <laughs> not that that's where I'd go first drinking, but um, <laughs> I would. Um, so just thinking like sort of multi um, mega events, yeah. like for example, the World Cup in, uh, in, in Doha when that happens. Um, great place but not many people will have been there on holiday i would imagine yeah that's um, um, so it would really potentially help with navigation yeah and we've um, found um when you're abroad um it you know it makes things so much easier um i was lucky enough to go to japan in november and i don't speak a word of japanese and not much is written in english and um, so some people from work gave me the three word addresses of some places that they recommended me to go rather than try and even pronounce the name of the restaurant or bar. I was just then putting in the three word address and I could get to that location. I could just walk there and I could get there fine. And so it's exactly the same thing. If you're going to Doha, you can't speak the language, you can't get around, you can't read it. Um, if you can just have it all in English and just give the English three word addresses and people can just say them to each other, you don't need to be able to speak Arabic at all. Brilliant. Yeah, we had a similar situation in September. We went to South Korea. And we we're trying to get a taxi back to the hotel and we didn't have a clue where we were going and the taxi driver didn't un understand a word we were saying he thought we were mad um <laughs> it would have been quite useful i guess in yeah, that situation um, we were actually built into uh cacao which is um bigger than google maps in south korea so okay they, they've recognized that as a as a tourist problem people go there obviously you can't speak or <laughs> say any korean and then you can now input a three word address into their cacao system which means that if you've got the three-word address in English, you can put it in. Amazing. Yeah, I'll, I'll know now. If you, yeah, if you ever go back. <laughs> <laughs> I think the next question, I think we've um, we've already answered this. Is, is there a way to utilize this within a building with multiple floors? But we've already discussed that. Yeah, within no, the, the, no, the guess is very limited, isn't it? Yeah, there's nothing. There is no height. It doesn't, height isn't a thing. It's coordinates, so it's completely 2D. It's very good at the where, but not the height. Okay, brilliant. Um, next question, can you see any problems implementing what three words in live events and what do you think these, um, and do you think these will be solved in the future? Have you come across any in, um, difficulties, I guess? Anything um, that stop, stops it being really effective? So we've covered the mobile phone one, that would be my obvious yeah. um, thought. In a, in a dense crowd, would it pack up and, and stop working? You've already said it won't, so that's good. Yeah, really, really, no, really good question. I think that is the, the most obvious one, is exactly the one you said. You're relying on your staff for having a smartphone and then having enough battery. Um, there is also nothing stopping people from giving a three word address and then also a normal, however they, however they describe that location. If someone says, incident has happened, you know, stage left of the main stage, this is the three word address, but you've already got stage left main stage. So, the traditional way that that person would have articulated that instance they've already got up to sort of like an accuracy level and then they put the three word address on top of that that can help you know do that last 25 meters in the crowd that can get them to the right spot absolutely um, it'll help with the people who don't understand stage left and stage right as well. <laughs> um exactly and um yeah so I, I think i think that's probably one of the main ones i think um just ensuring the level of education is, 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 is up there, making sure people understand if people are just blurting through word addresses that they may know what to do with them. They know how to share one on what on the WhatsApp group, if that's how people are talking. They know how to uh, navigate one on the compass uh, and through individually if people want to speak to me afterwards um, and help solve these problems because every event obviously has its own problems to solve. Um, what three words isn't this universal solution that's going to solve everything, but I I think it really helps and people have told me that it's going to be really beneficial so i want to help uh, people get the most out of it brilliant um does what three words have a spell check functionality for people who may not be as competent in the language 
Yes, uh, good question. Um, I'm dyslexic, so you would have thought what three words would have been my natural enemy. Um, but uh, we have a um, also suggest feature. So um, as you type in a three word address, if you're getting it slightly wrong, or even if the words aren't words, as soon as you start keying in your third word, um, it will give you some suggestions based on your location. Um, it's always, always assuming that you're most likely to be traveling within the country you're in and also the closer the closer the likely address that you typed in the more um, up the rankings it goes so if there's one that's 200 meters away that's you're spelling slightly wrong it will suggest that over one that is even more similar but is in saudi arabia if you're in england that sort of thing so based on location it will bring up more examples um, and it's pretty good um the easiest way if people aren't you know uh are having uh, difficulty spelling it is to say it to the app there is a speech function. If you click on the search bar on the top, you'll see a little speech bubble. You can just say a three word address uh, to the app um, and our accuracy rating is really, really good. And is that in any language you can say that? Uh, it's, I think it's up to 14 of the main ones, I think including Arab, Arabic, which is the one we've spoken about most. So I think it's like uh, English, Spanish, Arabic. I'm not sure of the rest. I can, um, if, there's, if there's any sort of emails going out after this, I can put a list of the languages out there. Yeah, please, that'd be great. Obviously, we, we've seen a lot more events happening in the Middle East at the moment, especially with the Dubai Expo and, and uh, some of the boxing events have been in the Middle East and festivals and things like that. And there's, there's a lot of different dialects, I believe, around in the Middle East as well. So, Yeah. Um, no, that's the one that I find, I think the, the function that I use the most is the voice function because I find it faster than typing. If someone tells me Lime's Petal Robots, I can just tap it and say it to the phone. Uh, which I find much easier. Particularly if you're outside, if you're outside and it's raining and you've got wet hands, or if you're, you know, when your thumbs go so cold that you tap on the screen, it doesn't do anything. That's going to be really useful. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Good tip. Okay, can you broadcast a what three words locate a coordinate to multiple users on the site? Uh, so, really good question. You can't share directly with other users on the site. Um, okay. But you can share straight on any other functions. So on the bottom of the app, there is a share function um, that can be shared uh, into any of your other sort of co uh, communication apps that you have. If it's Slack, if it's What Three Words, or if it's iMessage, any of those. Um, you also, from the last update, and actually since we last spoke, Andy, um, you have been able to save more locations. So this is particularly useful if you're mapping a site. You can, you know. Tap all the three word addresses of where you want your bollards to go or your signs or whatever, save them on the app and you can see them on the map. You can then put them into folders inside the app and you can now do up to a thousand locations. Uh, and then with the share function, you can now export all a thousand locations or as many as you want into a CSV file and send them to someone. Um, so that is, you know, if you are setting up your initial Greenfield site and normally you're wandering around with a stick, being like, normally goes about here, or you're using trying to use coordinates to decide where this the front of the main stage go, goes, you can now use this to share all the locations across the site. Or if you're doing a long distance site and you're putting signs up every half a mile for this particular road race or something, you can just find them all out, tap where you want the signs to go, pass those through our addresses through the app to someone on your team and say, this is where all the signs are. Brilliant. And I guess a, a consideration for those event planners and crowd safety managers uh, for this question, uh, where can you broadcast it? So I guess if you share your location, mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of events, we have WhatsApp groups because it's pretty stable. Yep. Um, however, due to the, um, the current pandemic, you can only share to six people through WhatsApp, through sharing something because it's been restricted to prevent the sharing of uh, lots of these nonsense fake news things about COVID-19. So just bear that in mind um, that you may be restricted using WhatsApp because I know a lot of a lot of you do use that and I certainly use it myself in events, but might restrict that ability there a little bit. Um, so is it possible to... Oh, sorry. Just going to say, if you are already aware of what you are, or you do share it on, you've got a WhatsApp group of all the security staff on site, there's a way to, in the settings, to edit the thing that you share. Normally, you can share a little picture of the map as well. This might always not be useful. You might just want it to words. You can edit what you share right down to the core essentials. So you, rather than it saying, because when you initially try and share it, you say, this is a three-word address. It's, you know, it's a three by three meter, blah, blah, blah. 
if you just want to share the three-word address, you can just produce what it sends and just send those. So you can keep it a stream on Facebook. So Brilliant. Um, is it possible to rename the squares for events? <laughs> um, for example, main entrance, main stage, first aid? Unfortunately not. Um, this was something that the company did toy with initially as a, as a sort of um, business idea. Uh, it didn't really work for a number of reasons. Um, one, that the main one that I see uh, is that if you change one word in one square, because they're all unique, you then have to change over a billion other squares because wow. there's not one effect <laughs> through the system. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, doing that then. Exactly. So um, there's also, you know, because you, you can't, they're all supposed to be unique. There's obviously a, a sort of a limited number of positive good words that people would want in their addresses. So everyone is fighting over these same words. Uh, and then also um, that, uh, uh, yes, yeah, so um, because people have it downloaded on their system or on their phone, if the words changed and then they didn't get the next update, those addresses are Brilliant. So I guess the, the way around that is a bit like you said again with. Um, Places like Winter Wonderland, where they promote that the main stage, this is the three words for the main stage or main bar, if you like. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so so that's the way around that. Yeah, just raising awareness that, you know, if you are, rather, because if you, you say the main stage, that is obviously the main stage is where the main stage is, but that doesn't tell you where it is. That is just the main stage is the thing. Whereas you have a, a three words that go with the main stage. You know, you say the same way you have, where do you need to go? Oh, I need to go to Golden Gate. You know what that is? No, I don't. Okay, well, it's at Lime's Petrol's Robot. That's where yeah. Golden Gate is. So that, that's the way around that, guys. Um, okay, that's that one done. Um, is there any countries in the world where governments block your software? That's a <laughs> political question for you. Uh, there's only one country that might be <laughs> Um, uh, China potentially could be the one that I was thinking of. Uh, and okay. it's, well, what three words is uh, we're present in China? Um, we have partners in China. Um, what three words again is just a piece of software that goes off of uh, coordinates, so there is no restriction there. Brilliant. Okay. Uh, next question would be. If you can't rename things, can you assign a tag or save them under a name? Yeah, so that's going back to what I was just talking about, about saving them in the app. Um, you can give every, every every single square that you tag, you can save the square and say, for example, um, marker point A, marker point B, marker point C, and do that for all of them. And then when you send those to people, they will then populate in their map and they can see exactly where those were. So this three-word addresser, you know, Lime's Petal Robots is up. That says on, on the app, it says Golden Gate. Uh, so yeah, you can really, you can tag each one in the app. You can tag up to a thousand per user. Brilliant. Uh, the next question is about um, where did you say there's an events toolkit on the website? I'm just going to put that back into the chat function now. Um, so you should see two um, two web links come up. One's to the first aid. And one's the other link you gave me, Josh. I don't know if you want to just explain them. Yeah, so these um, two uh, links, are, they're, they're kind of what's in them is kind of similar, but depending on what you want to do with what your words, they're sort of more specific. Um, in there, there's videos, there's sort of ways of grafting social tweets, um, there's uh, some resources for training, um, and all of these sort of used and edited by whoever has access to them like you guys and use them to help train staff uh, if you'd like to use what three words at an event and there obviously that's all completely free to use um, from you guys brilliant so, uh, two questions pretty much the same can you explain the photo share function again yes of course so so on the app as everyone hopefully has up and running more installed uh, along the bottom of the app there will be a share button, there will be a navigate button, uh, and there will be a save button, and on the right, there will be a photo button. Uh, when you click on that, if you've got a camera allowed, uh, it should then, as you'll see my face on my camera, it will then bring up your camera. Uh, and then as you take a photo, I'll take one out the window, it 
then offers you the option to tag the three word address of where you were when you took the photo. So this means that if you've got people walking around a large site, uh, it's thinking in terms of events and how this can be useful either for social, you know, promoting things, you know, this can be found at this location on social media or whatever. Um, or if you're using it for more utilities thing, you could have uh, some broken uh, some down power lines or, you know, some the sort of rigging that's gone wrong. You can take a photo of what's gone wrong and then you can tag it with a three word address of where it is and then you could forward that onto whoever that is most relevant to. Um, and that's sort of, sort of quite small. You can also back back uh, back locate if you will um, other photos. So if you've got an old photo that you want to put a three word address on, that's you can do that. As long as you have a three word address and you have the photo, you can pair them up in that feature as well. Amazing, brilliant. Um, is there a user guide or a downloadable user guide or any or sort of YouTube videos that people? Uh, yeah, there's, there's, yeah, there will be a bunch of YouTube videos that if you type in, you can kind of um, click your way around. They're all quite short, sort of 30 seconds explaining, you know, how to use new features on the app. Um, that's the sort of the best way. There's also um, inside the app, there's also a sort of um, have you done this guide that basically has five of the main features. And as you've done them, it will take them off. You can see if you've used the, all the different features of the app. Um, but uh, the best way I think to use it is to just have a play with it and sort of try and share locations with people, use the photo feature, uh, save some locations and then try the voice one and try and say it to people. Um, you can also scan on the app as well. So uh, next to the search bar on the top of the app, uh, um, if I cancel that. Uh, so this bit is the search feature, like it goes to a sort of thin bar if you point that at a three word address, so if I point that at Lime's Petal Robots, I just did it, I pointed it to Lime's Petal Robots on my screen and it's just managed to tag it on the app for me. I didn't have to type anything in. Um, then it can read by the OCR scanner that way. So you could do, everyone here, everyone here could do that now if you've got the app. Um, you could type in, oh sorry, click on the scan feature, point it at that three word address that's under the golden gate on the screen. Uh, and then it should scan it. And then if you zoom out, you'll actually see Winter Wonderland is actually right there <laughs> uh, when I've opened it. So yeah. Yeah, I think it's a bit shiny on my screen. The sun's shiny. So I'll try that again <laughs> in a bit. There is. Okay, um, final question. Um, what do you feel will be the next steps for what three words and what new features or developments do you hope to introduce in the next year or so? Um, Really good question. Is that event specific or general? Um, I, can, I, can, I can do both. Let's talk about events. Okay. Um, for events, um, I would like to see, well, we have lots of events lined up where what three words was being used uh, from a um, operational perspective. Um, it's going to be part of those, um, all the staff on site were going to be trained and it was going to be, you know, part of the operations manual, as it were, which I was really excited to see and how, see how that work and then troubleshoot that if there are any issues and how we could resolve them. Um, I think that what I would like to see is sort of three word addresses everywhere and particularly in, you know, when you, you could walk onto a site, uh, chat to a security guard or chat to a steward and they you could give them one or you, they could give you one rather than them trying to explain where the entrance is. They would just say to you, oh, you're looking for that? Oh, okay, it's at this, this location. And they will, they just know that. Um, because I've been to a lot of festivals, I've worked at a few and um, location has always been a bit of a bit of a hindrance. Um, but I think the goal of uh, sort of unifying the addressing standard or unifying the location standard at events is, is doable. I think um, I think we can really add value and really help people get the job done uh, when it comes to events and also trying to keep people safe is obviously right at the top uh, and that's a problem that we you know we know that we solve that and we know that we work with the emergency services so that's something that's probably the initial one that we can get done would be you know making sure that medical teams are trained on it and then everything else can come afterwards but that's probably the, the next the next step um, but I think that using them for attendee experience and for preset setup and for navigation, I think it solves all these problems. Brilliant. I've certainly got a few ideas of events that are, are our customers uh, and some stadiums as well, where we might be able to, to do some trials and, and then do some bits with that as well. So that's brilliant. So I think that's our final question, unless anyone else has got anything that they, 
they want to add. So feel free to throw your, your LinkedIn details into the chat box for everyone to, to connect with you. Um, the, um, the networking thing is, is really important in our industry, as you know. Um, so, Josh, there's just a, a comment there from uh, Walter, who lives in the Netherlands, um, yep. saying that he's not seen it used in the Netherlands yet. Yeah, that's um, we have sort of millions of users in the UK now. Um, the Netherlands, uh, one of my colleagues, my boss actually, she's uh, speaks Dutch, and she's been over there a few times. And we are speaking to emergency services over there. Um, you know, any public body is famously slow, um, and which we are speaking to people. But the the quickest way to get what three words integrated at any level is to start using it yourself and create that groundswell. Um, because it is the it's the initial awareness that is you know the hardest bit, and then once people have wrapped their heads around the concept, then they can start applying it to things. Um, so that's that's how to sort of get the ball rolling. And I'm um, talking about it, and you know if you've got a, if you've got any questions, anyone please um, you know add me on LinkedIn, send me an email, uh, and then we can talk through privately to discuss um, how we can help or how I can help. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, yeah, Otters one of your men for getting that involved in. Um in the Netherlands as well. He does a lot of events there. So um, be good if you could get that going. Mm. Um, I'm just about to send everyone your email address, Josh. Um, so everyone's got that. I'm just going to put Josh's email into the chat forum as well. This time I'll send it to all of you and not just to myself, as I did with the last thing. <laughs> so apologies for that. Um, encourage you to connect with Josh, and um, if we if we can make this a standard, we can certainly make events safer and make our own lives easier as well, and deal with incidents quicker. So, certainly a consideration to use. If it's free, why wouldn't we use it? I guess is the uh, the line there. Yeah. So, if if no one else has got any questions, thanks very much everyone for attending it again. Um, we are going to be releasing another webinar later today or tomorrow which is all about event medical and what to expect from your event medical provider in the, in the way of planning and documentation and what you should expect. Um, so that was really interesting. And we've also got some other really exciting ones to launch very soon. I'm just uh, getting the details off the speakers, but we will be continuing this for the foreseeable future, even when um, lockdown's finished as well. Um, we want to continue with these webinars because we're having some really good fun and meet some really good people on here. So. Thanks for your time, everyone, and um, we'll see you on the next one, which will be next Wednesday. We'll send you the details if um, if you're on our mailing list. If you're not, um, if you just um, look out for the adverts. I'm sure you'll be able to, to join the mailing list very quickly. Thanks thank a lot, you. folks. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Thank, it was you, good to um, thank you, Andy, for organising all of this. No, thank you very much for your time.